from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist as we begin this month of September. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the Rukovansky family from Toronto. This Mass is offered in memory of Eva and Lawrence Knebel, May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we ask the Lord, the God of mercy and compassion, to help us to walk on the straight and narrow, to turn away from sin, to be faithful to the gospel. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Amen. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has a firm foundation and nothing is holy, Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that are pure, that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, for God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things. 
One thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. I believe that I shall see I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see appeared among us. God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down before them, he came out of him without having done him any harm. They were all amazed and kept saying to one another, What kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and out they come. And a report about Jesus began to reach every place in that region. The Gospel of the Lord. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. All through Jesus' public life and teaching, he tried to convince the scribes and Pharisees that was what he precisely was, a one sent by God, the word that was from the beginning of all time and was sent, became flesh and dwelt amongst us. But the, fri the scribes and the Pharisees, and even of his disciples, took a long time. And yet the demons, the unclean spirits, would recognize him, and Jesus would rebuke them. When most of us read the scriptures, we do not do a scriptural commentary or go to a research. We just read the stories. We read the parable. We read the miracle. We read the wonders that Jesus does. 
we read the teachings he gives us, and then we meditate, we contemplate, we pray. And every now and then, even when we don't have a critical eye, we'll suddenly realize this is the same story. But in this case, there were two men who were possessed by the unclean spirit. In this case, there was only one. Why? What is the background? And so I'd like to share with you three thoughts. One is that one has to deal with time. The second has to deal with strength and the third has to deal with healing. The, disciple, the unclean spirits wanted to force Jesus to come out and manifest himself before his allotted time, and Jesus would not have it. He was a person totally in control of the whole situation. You remember the story of Cana, where Jesus makes that very strange speech or strange remark to his mother, my hour has not yet come. Jesus did not have a nine to five job, so he could say, well, come at 9.30 on a Wednesday afternoon, uh, morning or whatever. But he said, my hour has not yet come. And then when he was taken out into the wilderness, the devils tempted him. And it ends up with the words, and they left him for an appropriate time. And then at the end of Jesus' life, when he's ready to meet his death, he says, now is the hour of darkness. But Jesus is totally in control of the time. He will not allow the devils, as in the case of every exorcism, to force his pace. The second is a story of strength. If you read Mark's gospel, he introduces Jesus with a very unique way. He doesn't say, after me, someone is coming who is holier than I am, who is more famous than I am, but who is stronger than I am. Later on, Jesus, when he would be speaking about the devil and speaking about the enemies of the faith, he says, a strong man is in control of his house. But when a stronger man comes around, he will overpower the strong man. And that is what Jesus was trying to tell all of us. The devil is strong. He can lead us astray. But there is a stronger man coming around, and that is Jesus. Now, Luke, in his gospel, he speaks about Jesus' strength. He controls the demons. But Luke emphasizes the healing power of Jesus. Jesus is in control. He knocks out the devil, but he's not like Muhammad Ali or Mani Pacquiao saying, I have won. No, just the contrary. If you look at each one of the stages of his healing, he gives the credit to the person who is being healed. Remember the story of the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, and if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And when Jesus finds out who she is, Jesus does not humiliate her. He does not make her the center of attention. Very quietly, he says to her, it is your faith that has healed you. Jesus cured this woman when he was on the way to healing the daughter of Jairus. When he goes to Jairus' house, everybody makes fun of them. He puts them all out, and he only allows Peter, James, and John to come in. And then that beautiful scene in which he says, Talita kum, and he raises the little child from death and gives her life again. And when everybody is ooing and eyeing, Jesus' sensitive heart realizes this is a 12-year-old, for goodness sake. She has been lying on this bed. She is hungry. Give her something to eat. Jesus' tender heart will always recognize somebody that needs the help. And so when we come to the man who has been exorcised, we are told that the demon came out of him, but he was not harmed in any way. Each one of us has got all sorts of problems and worries, and Jesus is there to heal us, because Jesus is the wounded healer. 
And I'm not speaking only of his passion. We know his agony and his scourging and the crowning with thorns and the carrying of the cross and the ultimate crucifixion. And that must have been really painful. But there was other sorts of pains that he had. He was wondering and in confusion when he did the, all the teaching and they tried to kill him. And he says, why? What have I done? And when he talked about the Eucharist, many left him never to walk again. And Jesus felt it. And he turns to his apostles and says, are you also going to leave me? Jesus knew what we feel and where we hurt. And Jesus reaches out to heal us. And all we have to do is to recognize, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. We've got problems of all types, anger, jealousy, confusion, gossip, and the more troubling ones which we find difficult to go to confession, namely gambling and alcoholism and with the internet pornography. But in each one of these cases, Jesus lets his hand out to us and says, come out of him, come out of her, be free, because you are a child of God. And it is in this healing, Jesus, that we come and we make our prayers. Join me now as we pray together. Let us pray for Pope Francis's universal prayer intention, that volunteers may give themselves generously to the service of the needy. We pray to the Lord. For the gift of evangelization, that we may put ourselves aside and learn to, to be neighbors to those who find themselves on the margins of human life and society, we pray to the Lord. For the church in its mission to further the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. For all those seeking safe working conditions and a just wage, we pray to the Lord. For all of you who have written in asking for prayers, those suffering from osteoporosis, those suffering from ALS, those suffering from macular degeneration, and those who find it very difficult to deal with this, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you once again for bringing us together to celebrate this Eucharist, this gift, this service, this ministry of thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things 
whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, but this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Eva and Lawrence Knebel and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and Informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for compassion? Teach me how to be compassionate to the suffering, to the poor, the blind, the lame, and the lepers. Show me how you revealed your deepest emotions as when you shed tears or when you felt sorrow and anguish to the point of sweating blood and needed an angel to console you. Above all, I want to learn how you supported the extreme pain of the cross, including the abandonment of your Father. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he, give him, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and send it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6.